What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crappers Live. I'm David Wilson, and we're back again with another live stream where we get together as a community on Friday and talk about whatever topic I've come up with for the week. And uh, this week is no exception. Of course, last week was an exception because I didn't have internet. For some reason, my um, internet service provider has decided that recently is a good time to start just dropping my internet connection randomly during the week. And... Uh, just staying out for a while so i guess they you know they they think it's the holidays and it's just okay for them to take a little break here and there and not really do their job uh so yeah we're, we've been dealing with a little bit of issues with that lately uh today it was dropping a bunch i'm hoping it doesn't drop during the stream but if the stream dies at any point then it's just because my internet probably went out so if it does die i'll try to get things back up again and we'll, we'll see what happens but uh i don't want to jinx it but you know things have been okay for a few minutes here We'll see what happens. All right, let me say hello to the folks who are already here in the chat. Um, Fabian, Ashraz, DJ Cthulhu, Summer, uh, Anton, Robert, Mark, Elijah, uh, Gleneth, Gunn, Imretka, uh, Peter, Arno, Alex, Glenn. Hey, good, Glenn, nice to see you. Uh, Minas Mazar, uh, yes. All right, so I think I got everybody in the chat there, I believe. Glad to see you all. Thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it. It's been an interesting few weeks for me. Um, aside from the internet troubles, I ended up getting COVID, or in fact, my entire family got COVID maybe two weeks ago. Uh, it, it was okay. It wasn't that bad. I mean, we, we got through it. We're still dealing with the... Uh, the, what do you call it, the fallout from it. You know, the baby just now got better, but my five-year-old is getting sick again from something else. So it's been um, it's been interesting, interesting little period of time here. But uh, yeah, we're we're doing okay. I I felt fine after the first two or three days, but the the rest of my family didn't get it so easy. Hello to Daiko. Ashra says, "Welcome to the club." Negative since yesterday. Yeah, I have not actually become negative yet. It's been like twelve days, I think. Peter says sick here too, but negative tested. Yeah, we'll see. Hopefully you, you don't get that. Yeah, there's a lot of weird crap going around. Like uh, as Viz says in the uh, YouTube chat, maybe RSV flu cold. Yes, there, there is at my at my kid's school, there is all of them going around right now. Everything you could possibly want. A any virus you could possibly want is going around at schools right now. So if you have a kid in school, just uh, buckle down because it's going to be a pretty bumpy winter. All right, uh, let's see, what else? That's about it, but at least this week I'm not coughing, so uh, at least you don't have to listen to me do that the whole time. So I was sick for three weeks before I got COVID, and then the day that I started getting better was the day I did dream two weeks ago, and then the next day I had fever. <laughs> so that was really fun. Okay. So, updates. Uh, if you weren't watching, was it last weekend? Uh, Emacs Conf 2023 was happening, and uh, it actually went really well, I think. I did not get to sit and watch a lot of the talks, but um, I was in the IRC chat for uh, the conference for the, the two days it was going on. Lots of excitement, lots of people talking about some really cool talks that, that uh, were happening. If you go to the emacsconf.org slash 2023 page, um then you will see that there's recordings for all the talks. Actually, is this, is this the right page? Uh, I think that, that there was a different page I'm remembering, and that's why I'm, I'm having like a brain fart right now. But anyway, you can go to, to this page and see all the talks 
uh, and the details for all the talks. If you click on through on any of these, you'll you'll see the, uh, the talk details. But uh, the ones that stood out really were, um, I think, uh, Howard Abram's talk. I know that people were really excited about this one, how I play TTRPGs in Emacs. I haven't watched it yet, but I heard that the production quality there was pretty high. It was pretty uh, pretty funny. Um, and uh, there was another one that we will talk about later about hyperdrive but uh i can't really remember what the other ones were but if anybody has like their preferred talks from uh, the emacs conf 2023 uh drop them in the chat so that uh, other people can go check those out but yeah it was a really cool conference kudos to uh Sachichua and the rest of the organizers who put that on because uh, it seemed like it went really smoothly and that's it's kind of hard to do with a an online conference like uh emacs conf so uh, definitely a lot of work, but they, they 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 did the job and it came out great. So that's really cool. Uh, also, I want to point out a couple of new articles from the Sprightly Institute. Uh, that's the the group that is working on um, two kind of you know big notable projects. One being uh, Guile Hoot, uh, the schemed WebAssembly compiler that I've talked about a couple times on stream. Uh, Dave Dave is waiting through the Twitch ad right now. Right when I started talking about Sprightly. Um, so uh, also the Sprightly Goblins project, which is kind of like a decentralized protocol with like a, pro a nice programming interface and scheme. Um, so anyway, they put out a couple articles recently, one of them uh, featuring myself, uh, no, myself and Dave Thompson about the, the games we did for the uh, Lisp Game Jam, uh, which is a cool little interview for, of me and Dave about the, the games that we made for the uh, Autumn Lisp Game Jam. Uh, and also there's another article that just came out, and I think Dave may have written this one, um, about basically being able to write a scheme REPL, a scheme interpreter in the browser using Guile Hoot. This is not something that's released yet, but it's like kind of an example that uh, shows the power of having scheme in the browser. Because you have scheme, you have the ability to write a scheme interpreter, so you can have like a full scheme environment there. Uh, having a REPL is something that needs to happen sorry guile hoot needs an interactive REPL in the browser at some point to have more of an interactive development workflow in the browser but uh, at least for now if you wanted to have a uh REPL style experience you could follow what's uh, written in this blog post and you could do it yourself um i can't remember if there's anything else notable happening this week gun says in the chat didn't you have an internet outage yeah last friday my internet was out it was out for like two days. It started on Thursday and it went through to the end of Friday and it came back on right around the time, like an hour into when the stream would have normally happened. So that was kind of frustrating. All right. Emreka says she feels weird if she doesn't have a REPL running. Yes. Well, you know, REPL is uh, one of those things where if you just get used to doing things that way, it, uh, you kind of want to do it all the time. Hello to iFin, iFine. First time here. Nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Redacta says, glad you're back. Thanks. I'm glad to be back. It's fun streaming, even if things are completely unprepared and, uh, you know, we just kind of shoot from the hip. All right. That's it for the updates this time. I don't really have anything else for that, but, you know, maybe next time I'll, I'll be paying more attention in the week. This week, I'm just trying to, like, finish up all the work that I have to do for my job before the... Uh, the two weeks I'm going to take off. So maybe next week I'll be a little bit more dialed in. All right. So uh, today I want to talk about a project called hyperdrive.el. This is a new Emacs package that I don't know how, how long it's been around, but um, the goal of this package is to make it so that you can um, share files between your devices or with other people through a peer-to-peer -peer network effectively. Um, I don't really know much about how it works under the covers, but what I do know is that hyperdrive.el is a really nice interface for Emacs, which en enables you to share files with other people from within Emacs. Um, so we're going to take a look at that package today. And uh, I haven't actually tried it yet, haven't set it up, but uh, it is something that we will will do here. And uh, Ashra says, for the important part, does your keyboard have a hyper key for today's task? No. Uh, Gunn says, uh, Christmas in Greece is later than elsewhere, isn't it? Um, not exactly. I mean, Christmas is still on Christmas Day, but uh, like Santa Claus comes on New Year's and not on Christmas. And I think people 
typically open gifts on New, New Year's, something like that. I can't remember exactly. We still do things the, uh, the American way. Because it's earlier, that's why. Who wants to wait an extra week to open presents? All right, uh, let's see. So there was a talk about this hyperdrive.el package at Emacs Conf uh, by Joseph Turner and uh, Protasilal Stavru. And if you want to watch that, you should. It was kind of like a joint talk where they both uh, have their own sections to talk about the project and the package. Um, but it does give a little bit of an overview here. But the best place to get an overview for Hyperdrive is the manual page. And this is quite high quality for such an early package, 0.4 pre. I don't know. I mean, it seems like it's, you know, not 1.0 yet. So uh, for it to have such a solid manual is kind of nice. Uh, so we'll be following through the, with the manual today and try to figure out how to use this thing because I haven't, re haven't really tried it. And to be honest, I watched probably the first quarter of the Emacs Comp video. So I don't really know what they all had to say about it. So that's why we're going to figure it out live. Hello to Bionic Babblefish. <clears throat> so um, I say that hyperdrive.el is... Uh, something that you can do from within Emacs, but there is a component that you need to install on your computer using Node.js before this will work because the actual mechanics of talking to the peer-to-peer -peer network is not all implemented in Emacs. And I don't, I don't really know if it will be at any point. I don't know if there's any like special cryptography stuff or uh, some libraries for peer-to-peer -peer communication that aren't available in Emacs list but that they can't use. So um, it could be that you will always need to have Node.js installed plus this other hyperdrive gateway program, but we will um, we will show how to set that up and then see how well it is how well it works. So the manual says a hyperdrive is a P2P real time local first versioned file system. That's a lot of stuff designed for easy peer to peer file sharing. Hyperdrive.el is an independent project built by the Yushin by Yushin which provides an Emacs interface for managing hyperdrives. Uh, Gunn says, does it share Emacs buffers? Uh, I guess, yeah, these, these are buffers, I guess. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. So uh, if you go to the link for hyperdrive itself, uh, it's kind of interesting because it doesn't really tell you much about hyperdrive itself. It just tells you about the uh, JavaScript API for interacting with hyperdrives. So if you know uh, JavaScript and use Node.js, then you could probably use this hyperdrive thing for some other interesting um, functionality, which I'm kind of interested in, because if you can plug this into other tools, it could be pretty useful. But uh, having a Guile scheme interface for this would be kind of nice, I think. I don't see why it wouldn't be possible, but like I said, I don't know how the protocol is implemented or what other components are needed. Obviously, some kind of uh, cryptography stuff will be needed for this, but it should just be sort of standard, I would guess. Ashra says, uh, Hyperdrive is file-backed. If you're interested in sharing Emacs buffers for collaborative editing, you might be interested in crdt.el. Yes. Uh, Ashra is right about that. I don't think this is for live editing, but you should be able to save changes to the file, and it should be propagated to anybody who has access to the file. However, I don't know that it will automatically refresh the buffer. So, Summer Emacs says, does it need uh, dilithium crystals to work? I have no idea, but I kind of doubt it. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the uh, the first steps in here. Hyperdrive.el requires uh, Emacs 28.1. Okay, so they say that soon they'll depend on Hyper SDK, SDK RPC instead of Hyper Gateway. But if you go look at the repo for this, um, there's kind of nothing there at the moment. Probably they're working on it. Is there like another branch or something? Initial. Okay, there's there's some code here, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen anytime soon, so I don't even know why they really mention it. So, but this hyper gateway is a thing that needs to be installed, and it can just be installed using NPM. I haven't done this yet. Uh, let me actually see if I have Node installed. Okay, 1815, that's good enough, I think. So uh, NPM install uh, G hyper gateway. Nice uh, shell output here in eShell. Just taking a sweet time. We'll see what it does. 
Summer says, he's flying blind. Everybody put your seatbelts on. Yes, we're, we're going to uh, do this all wrong for sure. Okay, uh, Hyper Gateway. Cannot find package debug. Hmm. Well, that's kind of interesting. Not a good sign if it doesn't work out of the box, right? So let's see, uh, NPM global lib modules, hyper gateway. Um, let me just open that one up. Node modules debug. Oh, I wonder if it does need an, a newer version of node. Doesn't say anything, does it? Okay, node 18. I wonder if I'm using node from, from Nix. Uh, read link which uh, node. Oh, wrong syntax. Yeah, it's in Nix. Okay. Uh, Redacta says, are you using eShell plus eat for all your shell work? I, I don't know if eat's turned on right now. Let's see. Eat, uh, eShell eat mode. It's not on. Sometimes it does weird stuff, though, so I, I kind of, like, haven't been using it. Summer says, updating notice is so painful. Not, not so much with Nix. The, now I have to remember the Nix uh, invocations for this. Uh, also, let's see. What version of Node does Geeks have? Because I think it does have Geeks. 1817. Slightly newer, but it not, it's not the LTS version. Aaron says, I didn't need to update Node. Hey, Aaron. Uh, just NPM install debug. It's kind of lame that you have to do that. And it doesn't say that there is a... Uh, a dependency on that. Anybody file an issue on it? If it needs that package, it really should just do it itself, right? All right, let's just try that again. Hyper Gateway help. Okay, cool. So they need to update their docs. So let me put this in the show notes. Uh, was it hyperdrive gateway and debug? Okay. Oh, hyper hyper gateway. So that's for installing hyper gateway. Now, if we install the package, it should work. So I don't think this is in Geeks yet. So we're gonna install it using. Uh, well, let's let's update our package archives first. Uh, package refresh. Refresh contents because I haven't done this in a while. Don't want to get stuck. All right, that should be good enough. Package install hyper drive. There it is. P2P file system. Cool. Wow. All right, so now let's go back to the manual. So we've installed hyperdrive.el uh, from, I'm supposing it's non GNU Elpa. Actually, that looks like Melpa based on the uh, version. Example config. So when package install p hyperdrive global set key control c h hyperdrive menu. Well, we can try that and see what happens. Oh, I need to load it up. Interesting. Was there a problem with the installation? It says it's installed. Uh, dot files, dot emacs, elpa, hyperdrive, it's there. Interesting that it's not loading it.
What am I doing wrong? <laughs> Ashra says, uh, Hyper provides a binary release that you can use without grabbing the whole node ecosystem, do they? And where is that is in the releases? Must not, oh, is it there? Ah, cool. Okay, good. Yeah, that's great. Take a look at the fact. See, that's what, that's what happens. I'm on the stream. <laughs> I don't have time to read. You think I have time to read? All right. Why is this not working? Load path. Did it not add it to the load path? <clears throat> Isn't that lame? What the hell happened? Huh. Let's do it again. That oh, won't let me. Yeah, it's not the issue here. It's very strange. Whatever, dude. Um, add to load path. Okay, add to list, load path. Let's just, uh, whoa. Okay, that's cool. This is propertized. Let's see if it's gonna give me any trouble here. Okay. I don't know why I didn't add it by itself, but that's something that a person should not have to do if you install this and you restart Emacs. So uh, the fact that I had to do that just now was kind of a fluke, I think. All right, now we've got a control CH binding. There's no hyperdrive menu command. Uh, okay. So that's in the manual, and it's listed for version 0 0.4. Is the Melpa stuff out of date somehow? Package archives. I don't know why I have Melpa in here anyway. Happy for being fired? What are we talking about? Apparently, you know something I don't know. All right. Um, can I pin that maybe? Here, let's do this. Let's do this. Yes. Auto loads are messed up. Uh, stems from hyperdrive menu. Yeah. Um, that's kind of lame. What's the deal with that? All right. I believe that. I believe that. All right. Let me just install the package again because I just totally destroyed everything. Uh, ah, package. No, it's not. I just deleted the whole folder. Help of priorities. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I totally broke it. All right, so um, hyper drive is not in the list of those archives. Screw it. Let's go back to this. I'm going to say use package hyperdrive. Uh, ensure T pen. How do I put uh, non GNU Elpa in here? Archives. Non GNU. I'm guessing that will work. Or is it like this symbol? Non GNU. Uh, string. Okay, fine. Has to be an archive name, same as in the package archives variable. Hey, now, because it's already loaded, 
Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to restart Emacs. Just to fix the mess that I've made. Okay. Go back to site, system crafters, content, live streams, December 15. There we go. Org present. There we go. All right. Now let's run this again. Cool. This time it's installing from uh, non GNU. Cannot load hyperdrive. Mm hmm. Is that right? Are you really going to make me reload Emacs again? Well, let's just double check. That's strange, man. I'm very confused. It's all in here. Is there something about the, the configuration of this package that makes it not get added to the load path correctly? Because that doesn't make any sense. Very weird, right? I wonder if there's something in my config on this machine that's causing it. All right, uh, find file, deck 15, there we go. Yeah, if I delete it and recreate it, it's probably just going to cause me more trouble. Let me just do this because I don't want to mess with it anymore. Add to uh, list load path. All right, I'm doing that because I have to hyperdrive. It definitely didn't reevaluate the auto loads, that's for sure. Let's get that out of here. And we can do this. Uh, I can set up a bind for that, right? Bind. And also uh, commands. Is that the right? Mm. My mistake. I've forgotten the bind uh, syntax. Hello to whimsically made. Yes, it's me. <clears throat> Package install hyperdrive. Yes, well, it's not uh, not so simple, apparently. Bye uses a console. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, that time is happy. Got to appease the macro gods here. Okay. Hyperdrive menu. Uh, fail to load function. Yeah, require hyper drive menu. The auto loads are totally busted. I don't get it. Okay. Auto loads menu. As always, we're fighting with things that aren't helping us get to the right result. Oh, hyperdrive menu. Why can't I require it? Okay, somehow the paths are not being set up correctly. And this is in the same folder path as everything else.
So what's deer have in it? Ah, okay. An area by transient? <laughs> We're having a good time, aren't we? Anyway, screw it. All right, let's 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 skip the menu thing. Now, obviously, that indicates we're going to have problems elsewhere, but... Hyperdrive menu bar mode. Uh, menu bar mode, because I had turned the menu bar off. Hyperdrive is here. We can click it. And for some reason, my menu bar is not uh, cooperating. Can I right-click? What is happening? Should I do this in a clean Emacs install or clean Emacs config? I find it very strange that I can't open a menu. Hyperdrive menu. Okay, start gateway, open URL, new drive. Cool. So at least we have that working. Ashra says the menu is essential, at least from a nice UX point of view. Maybe. Okay, here we go. Let's actually get back to it. So hyperdrive start. We got to start the gateway first. So, um, is that an interactive command? Hyper, hyper drive start. Okay. Well, I don't see anything. Is there a buffer? I don't see any buffer. Gateway command. Can I not see the status? Hyper gateway. Okay, so there is a process. So apparently it did run. Cool. So it's running. All right. So let's put that in the show notes. Uh, start the gateway with. Of course, we probably need to put that in here somehow, right? For this to work at all. Gun says humming sound. Everything turns blurry. Hmm. Yes, we've, we've engaged a hyperdrive, and now uh, we're going to be shifting through timelines, I think. Okay, open a hyperdrive. Well, we don't really have one yet. Oh, I can try this one. So let's try this link here. Hopefully it works. Uh, hyperdrive open URL. Hyperdrive open URL. I'm going to paste this link in. And now it's doing something. Mm, error running timer. Please respond. It's timing out. Let's see what it does. Hyperdrive menu should pop up a transient and show the status of the gateway. That'd be nice if it did. It. Hmm. Okay. Nothing happened. Anything in messages? Okay. Void function hyperdrive deer handler. Okay. So we did have a problem. Uh, so hyperdrive deer, I'm guessing. Let me put a little uh, quote before that. That loaded. Now let's try it again. There we go. Cool. So now we're getting a direct listing of this hyperdrive. This does not look like a deer ed uh, listing. This looks like something else. Kind of nice. Um, feelings list. That sounds nice. Let's open that up. Buffers read only. If I press, let me get out of e, uh, evil mode here. Hey. So we open this off of uh, the hyperdrive. You can see here there's a little prefix on the buffer name saying nickname Ushin. I think this is um, a concept of hyperdrives where a hyperdrive has a, a public hash for the URL, as you can see here, there's like a, basically a maybe SHA-256 hash or something like that that identifies a hyperdrive. A hyperdrive is a folder effectively in this P2P network. So uh, we addressed it through that hash, but apparently it has its own friendly name of Ushin or Yushin, however they pronounce that. And uh, we could possibly load it up using that too. But uh, we do have some files here we can take a look at. I wonder what's in the media folder. Okay, there's a, a screencast from Libra Planet. Let's see, can I open that? Oh, that's actually uh, slides. How about this this uh, screencast? I need to get out of Emacs mode. Does MPV work for me on this machine? Okay, maybe it does. Had problems on my other machine. Whoa. 
Um, can I MP? Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened? Hyper uh, video stream. Stream player command. Yeah, MPV is not working for some reason. <laughs> Let's see what's in index.org. Okay, this is basically like their website. I wonder if I can edit these files. Mm -hmm. uh, read only. That's cool if it could be, if you could set up a read only drive. I like that if it's the case. Hyper drive read write write buffer. Mm. All right, I'm getting ahead of myself. So open URL, find file, hyperdrive view file. So these things are clearly working. We're opening files out of this drive. Ashra says only orig the original author has write access, okay? What did Jeff say? <laughs> nah. Hey, Purple G. One writer, many readers. Hypo drive. Okay, so uh, Hyperdrive offers a dired like interface for exploring Hyperdrive directories. The following key binds are available uh, in and P. That's cool, because uh, I was... Okay, in and P go up and down. Cool. Uh, return is find file. O is open another window. V is view file. I guess that's a, a preview mode, basically. Up directory, revert buffer. Sorting, deleting, uh, history. Let's check out history, capital H. Ah, require hyperdrive history. The auto loads are totally screwed up here. Okay, so we get a history listing for this folder. Um, version range, 283 to 330, last modified. Okay. Doesn't tell me much. Oh, that was the history for that one file, apparently. Can I not get the history for the whole folder? Uh, let's see. <laughs> okay. Let's do that. What was it H, capital H? Yeah. Directory history not implemented, fine. Feelings list, all right, we have some history here. Uh, let's see, view the hyperdrive version history. So open previous version. So you can look at different versions of these files, which is pretty awesome. So if you have like, you know, org files that you've saved in a hyperdrive, you should be able to go back to previous versions. Uh, let's see. Open at version, hyperdrive, open at version. Can I go, oh, actually, feelings list, hyperdrive, open at version. Leave blank for latest version, uh, 290. Cool, so this whole folder, I'm looking at it in version 290, apparently. And some of these files were edited in November, August, Nothing recently though. So if I close that, I can see some of more of the files were edited in December 3rd. So it apparently does go back in, in the past. What about 250? Yeah, so, so it's edits in November. So if I go to the feelings list, uh, I gotta get out of evil. I can open that up. I don't know if it's any different. I don't know if you can Diff files. Oh, history diff. Wow. What is Ewok? What, whatever that is, I have not heard of it. Abstract display. I don't want you to translate it to Greek, please. Thank you. Represent the structure of Lisp objects. Emacs widgets for object collection. So this is like, uh, what was it called? The UI framework for common Lisp? Yeah, 
Everyone's, everyone wants overclock? Sure. Okay. So uh, that's cool. We're seeing things from the past. Let me go back to the original stuff. So we can delete files, uh, directory history, copy URLs to files, which is going to be necessary. Let me see. What is that? Um, w? So that's what a link looks like. It's this whole hash plus whatever comes after. And you can even link down to files of specific versions. So that's pretty cool. Hyperdrive, open, URL. I'm just going to paste that URL in directly. Yeah, so you can just go straight to a URL. You don't need to open the drive first, apparently. Uh, open I menu to cl quickly jump to a file in the current directory. That's cool. 404. Didn't open it though, did it? Oh, you're just literally jumping to the location in the buffer. Okay, that's fine. A hyperdrive menu is question mark. Let's go back to the directory. Failed to define function hyperdrive menu. Yeah, that, that menu function just isn't working. You know why? Because apparently they're defining as a transient. I bet money that uh, somewhere in the code... This looks like something. H menu bar menu. Oh, okay. Transient is a... Okay, transient defined suffix, menu, blah, blah, blah. You should see it somewhere in here, right? Hyperdrive menu, yeah. Show the hyperdrive transient menu. Ah, it's still being treated as an autoload. Okay, whatever. Create directory no op. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, so apparently you can't create directories and they're just putting this binding here so that uh, DRED users don't get confused whenever directories don't get created by plus sign. Okay. Yeah, I think I screwed up the... Uh, I screwed up the auto load by uh, doing it this way with the commands. It, it expects it to come from hyperdrive.el. So I think that's probably my fault. Directory display buffer action. Okay, so you can kind of hack how the files load up. Cool. Revert buffer quick. Refresh the file to display potential updates. This command remaps the global revert buffer quick key binding. I've never actually heard of revert, revert, buffer, revert buffer quick. My goodness, I can't speak. Control X, Control J gets rebound uh, to jump to a parent directory from a hyperdrive file. Okay, that's useful. So if I go back to this 404, Control X, Control J, didn't work. Uh huh. Oh, <laughs> the Jabber package decided it just wants to take that. Thanks, Jabber. I can still evaluate the definition of the transient or the whole hyperdrive menu buffer. Yeah, let's see. Uh, eval buffer. Invalid slot name. Mm hmm. Things are going really well, as you can see. Okay, render HTML. Control how HTML hyperdrive files are displayed. By default, HTML pages are rendered in Emacs with EWW. Oh, okay. So what if I go to one of those files in the folder listing? What was that command? Hyperdrive up. Hyperdrive up. Ah. Okay, so it must just use a remap on whatever DRED jump is. Cool. All right. I like that. See you, MNS Mazer. All right, so at least for me, uh, Super E is the binding. That's because I have DRED jump set to Super E, so it must have just remapped that command. So it says if you open an HTML file, it will uh, render it with EWW instead of with uh, opening the buffer as text. Hey, cool. All right, that's kind of interesting, actually. Unknown paths. Okay, if you go to a path that doesn't exist, it will give you 
a prompt. That's fine. Let's let's create a new hyperdrive. Let's try to do some things ourselves here. Because, all right, this is nice and fun to uh, see someone else's hyperdrive. But let's see what we can do to create one for our own use. So hyperdrive new. New hyperdrive seed. What does that mean? Create a new hyperdrive from a seed string. Uh, when you create a new drive, your chosen seed is used as its pet name. Oh, okay. So, uh, system crafters live test. Here we go. And it's given me a URL for this hyperdrive. And currently, it's empty. After modifying a file in one of your hyperdrives, save buffer will silently update the current hyperdrive file with the new content. So the question is, how do I start a new buffer in here? Write buffer, write the current buffer to a hyperdrive by choosing one of the hyperdrives you have created as well as the path in that hyperdrive where you want to store the file. So apparently I have to create a new buffer somewhere. Uh, yeah, it's like you have to create a new file temporarily. Yeah, okay, we're in temp, that's fine. So, um, test.org. So if I say hyperdrive write buffer, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna pick this pet name system crafters test, the path would be uh, readme.org. Okay, wrote readme.org to hyper, cool. So if I go back to the system crafters test and refresh it, then the readme.org shows up, nice. Now the question is how can I copy this link so that other people can go uh, check it out. Hmm. Uh, RC, IRC. Great. No, 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 no. Yes, kill it. Uh, ERC. Yeah. Sure. No. I'm gonna go drop this in the IRC. Please don't leak your password within IRC. I'm not going to. I don't think I will anyway. Uh, all right. Did it join? Yeah, I'm not seeing the buffer. That's the reason why I'm confused. There it is. Okay. Yes, I am here. What was the... If I go up to this file, A. Hey. Was it just W? Cool. Make sure I did that right. Yeah, so with that hyper uh, link, if you have hyperdrive.el installed and working correctly, you should be able to open that and see this readme.org file that I created. The question is, how can someone else edit files that you've put in there, I wonder? Okay, so link to a hyperdrive, we can copy the URL. Uh, anybody with a link can load the file and view its contents. That's the neat part. You don't. Which part? You mean nobody can edit it? Uh, org mode links. If the current file is an org mode file, org store link will store a link to the hyperdrive file. If the point is inside a heading, okay, cool. So you can link to org files that are inside of a hyperdrive, which is kind of nice. Org link full URL, markdown links, delete a hyperdrive file, view the hyperdrive version history, open the history buffer, uh, describe a hyperdrive. You can set the pet name, set the nickname. Okay, so I can set a nickname for this. Uh, hyperdrive set nickname.
Okay, that should work. I don't know how you connect to it. Gun says, are links to hyperdrive hyper hyperlinks? I suppose you could say that. You can even create bookmarks in here, apparently. Uh, it's also possible to stream audio and video that comes out of there. So I guess if you want to share some pirated uh, video files, then you can do that. I don't know um, if I turn this gateway off. If nobody else has, has synced these files, are they still in the network somewhere? Or is it something where somebody has to have them? to seed the uh, the opening of the file. Okay, so download hyperdrive files. Yeah, it's, it's cool that uh, you know people were able to connect to this without me having to open any ports to my firewall or anything. I know Summer was joking about that earlier, but apparently uh, it works just fine. Yeah. Okay, upload files from your file system. So if you want to um, upload files you already have, you can do that. And also you can mirror directories. So if you have a, a directory of files, you can actually mirror all of those. Um, I wonder if it up, keeps them updated. The source and target directories will be compared and only the files which are new locally, they don't already exist on the drive, or if they've been updated locally. Uh, they'll be uploaded files which are the same or older locally will not be uploaded. Okay, so if you've edited the file in the hyperdrive, then, and the local copy is, is older, it doesn't have those edits, then it won't upload those. So it basically tries to keep it from breaking. Okay, so there's a... Ah, as a confirmation step, hyperdrive mirror displays each file to be uploaded. And then, uh, okay, so you actually have to confirm everything. So if I were to go to uh, projects, uh, sites, systemcrafters.net, content, live streams. If I were to go to this folder and say uh, hyperdrive mirror, mirror directory, live streams. I think that should be fine, right? I'm going to do it to System Crafters live test. Target directory, live streams. And now it gives me this um, UI that tells me all the files it's gonna upload. I review those, make sure th those are the ones I want it to upload. I think it's all fine there. How can I like tell it not to do one though? Can I delete? Files from this list, control K, whoa. Okay, so it's read only. Yes, G says, is there a way to start a frame with its own unique buffer list? Uh, Prot's beframed package does work very well for that. I've actually been using it recently. Okay. I I don't know if there's anything sensitive in any of those files. Technically, these have all been, uh, yeah, those have all been checked in. They're already public. So it should be good. Let's do that again. Hyperdrive mirror, live streams, subscribers test, live streams folder. And then if I do control C, control C, it will upload all those files. And apparently they are all there now. Um, and if you go, if you refresh that folder, I don't exactly know how you're supposed to do that. Hyperdrive refresh. I guess it's a hyperdrive re revert buffer quick, control X, X, G. Then it should refresh that uh, buffer. And now you should see the whole live streams folder there. Uh, okay. And you can go into that folder, you can open up any of the files. So this stream from uh, 2021, creating a new lisp. Ooh, that sounds exciting. <laughs> this looks very, very complicated, says Summer. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is what we do here. We just look at comp com complicated stuff for fun. Ashra says, given that it reuses many DRA keys, I wouldn't be surprised if G just worked fine. I used uh, GR a second ago, and I think it worked. So 
revert buffer in general seems to work. Okay, purge the hyperdrive. Data which has been purged from your local machine may still be available on the network. So uh, beware, if you upload any file to the hyperdrive network and someone else has opened it at any point, it's possible that it could still be out there and be shared. So if you have files you don't want to be out of your control anymore, don't put them in hyperdrive and share them with someone. Data which has been purged from your local machine may not be recoverable. Uh, I'm guessing that means because you have your local cache for the hyperdrive network, and if you delete the original files and then you delete your hyperdrive cache, then those, those files are gone. All right, non-interactive use. Uh, let's see, hyperdrive mirror. So you can automate the process of mirroring a folder. Like if you want to put it in your config, you can uh, set up this hyperdrive mirror and just do everything by default. So recursively upload all the files from your local file systems blog directory into the blog directory of hyperdrive. To upload the same files without confirmation, add no confirm T. So you can automate this as part of your configuration. I don't know if this is going to be refreshing though. You may have to have like a timer that refreshes these. Alternatively, you can select files by tag using Carl Voix's uh, file tags. Management of simple tags within file names. This is kind of like denote in a way. Haven't seen it before. All right, find file at point integration, embark integration, that's cool. Web jump integration, what is web jump? Programmable web hot list facility that uses Emacs completion to set a hot list item. Okay. So it's just like a quick access to URLs or something. Wait, what? Is it part of Emacs now? Okay. Ah, well, there it is. Jumps to a website from a programmable hot list. Ah, another feature of Emacs that I've never seen before. How about that? Web jump, nice. Summer says, so what would you share with this? I'm still curious. I'm guessing repos, code. Well, um, the impression I'm getting from what I'm seeing is that this is meant for sharing files for others to view either media files or uh, even like HTML files. So if you wanted to share a website with people through this network so they can browse it through, from within Emacs, apparently that's a thing you could do. Um, it's almost like, well, I'm not gonna say it's almost like Gemini because it's not really like Gemini, but it, but it could be sort of like a an alternative web, quote unquote, where you can navigate to a URL um, and just look at someone's site they have set up in the hyperdrive sort of peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, if it's not possible for other people to edit files, then it doesn't seem to be useful for collaboration, which kind of sucks. Also, if you can't edit the files from the different or the different devices you have. Like let's say you want to have your files being synced between your desktop computer, your laptop, and your phone. Uh, I haven't seen yet whether it's possible to, to do that with at least this package. Let's go back to the manual and see what we see on that. Okay, concepts. Hyperdrive is a virtual file system which you can use to share files on the peer-to-peer -peer network. It's a folder with a globally unique link that you can put files into and other peers can pull pull files out of if they have the link any with anyone with a link can download its context directly from your computer directly from your computer okay there's no need to make an account or rely on a third party to pass the data along anyone who has a copy of your content can serve it to others so it can circulate on the network even if you're off offline but that somebody with your content has to be online for it to be accessible so that is kind of 
a limitation, but maybe that's not a problem for some people. Hyperdrive is single writer, meaning that you are the only one who can change the hyperdrive you created. Files in a hyperdrive are cryptographically signed to ensure their integrity and authenticity. You can create as many hyperdrives as you like. It's offline first, so you can view files that are previously downloaded. It's also local first, since you can connect with peers on a LAN. Okay, even without an internet connection, that's cool. Uh, unlike BitTorrent, hyperdrives are mutable. You can add, update, or delete files in a hyperdrive, and peers will be able to access the latest version at the same link. However, old versions can still be accessed. They're versioned. Yeah, 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 yeah. A uh, hyper gateway handles interactions with hyperdrive under the hood, runs a local HTTP server. Uh, let's see, get requests, put requests to edit files and write files. That's fine. Public keys, nicknames, pet names. It's possible to use DNS link to link to a hyperdrive with a domain name instead of a public key. I guess that could be useful if someone is really trying to, to uh, build on this. Just the following options in the customization interface. All right, that's fine. What I really want to know is how can a person edit their files from multiple devices? Because it seems like that should be possible. Files and folders are going to have the same name. Hyperdrive info manual. I'm guessing it's the same content we just read. They have an XMPP chat. Ah, so apparently uh, Alpha Papa wrote, oh, he rewrote hyperdrive.el. Probably because he wanted uh, please.el to be used. Alpha Papa is not here for me to joke at him about that. All right, so that seems to be it. Now let's look at the, um, this hyper gateway. Does it say anything about changing files or sharing keys? Interesting. It. Purple G says, we'll clip it and send it to him. What are we clipping? Um, let's see. I was going to look for hyper. No, that's hyperbole, I'm guessing. Yep. All right. Oh, that's right. Yes. We, we can clip it and send it to Alpha Papa. That's right. Yeah, it does seem to be about publishing. I mean, has anybody seen IPFS before? It's kind of the same thing, right? You have IPFS. It's effectively just a big distributed file system that anybody can dump files into. I don't know if you can create a folder in IPFS, sort of like uh, Hyperdrive is able to, but it's kind of the same idea. You can just upload a, a file and then send a link to someone and if they, if they have the IPFS daemon running, they can download that file too. So uh, there's a lot of other things like this. There was also uh, the Beaker browser. I don't know if anybody heard about that before. Is this still around? I'm not seeing any official website anymore. Did it get canceled? Archive notice. Uh-huh, okay. Anyway, uh, Beaker was a browser which I think used one of those decentralized um, file networks. And the cool thing about it was that you could create a website with the browser and then the browser itself is sharing the site so that other people can go to it. It's kind of the same thing. Beaker is dead. Yeah. Paul Frazee decided he uh, would rather just work at Blue Sky. Who knows what they're doing there? Okay. So I did not get my question answered yet. 
sorry, folks, I haven't really been paying attention to the chat so much. Let me uh, scan back through and see if there's any questions I missed. DJ Cthulhu says, this thing looks like it could be a data security nightmare. I don't know. I mean, if you upload a file and you don't want it to be on the network, then yeah, that could be a problem. If you decide later that, that you don't want it there. Uh, Summer says, so somebody on the other end doesn't need Emacs. They can type the hyper URL and grab your stuff from the browser. No, you can't, uh, you can't use it from the browser. You would have to have some kind of tool or program, sort of like this hyper gateway on your machine that facilitates accessing files through this network because a browser doesn't know inherently how to, how to access these. Unless someone has a, um, a portal site where you could go to a website and then put in a link to a hyper file and it will give it to you because um, hyperdrive portal site. A web client to view. Is there a website for this? Da, 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 da. Where is it? Information. Do you not host this on the internet somewhere? Anyway, the idea is that you could just use something like this to uh, access links. Yeah, I don't see one that's public yet. Uh, Summer says, if I do it with tail scale, then it'll use tail scale address and they can't access it unless they're invited. I am not sure. Ashra says, you can set up Firefox to understand hyperlinks, which can uh, automatically would change the URL to localhost. Oh, okay, sure, yeah. Uh, there's a fact. Hypergateway routes. Gotcha. Makes sense. So you're basically just rerouting, rewriting the URL. Okay. Yeah, so whatever is stored for the key to write the files, I mean, what you need is the key, I think. I mean, obviously I don't really know how everything works under the covers, but to create files in this network, and to update them, obviously it requires some piece of information that identifies you as the owner of the files or the hyperdrive folder. So there must be a, a key that gets generated as you create your session. So to get back to your files again, you need to have access to that key to back it up so that if you ever need to set, up, set it up again on another machine, you can do that. So there must be something somewhere on my, on my hard drive now that, uh, is like the cache of the information for this. Whoa. Hyper directory, download directory, path, no. There's gotta be something. Uh, Summer says, so basically it's a new protocol for website sharing personally in a sense, sort of, yeah. I mean, it's also for like, sharing files apparently you know if you wanted to quickly share a file with someone else like let's say for instance um you have a file on your machine that you want to give to someone but you don't want to have to upload it to some website first you can just uh create a hyperdrive link for that file and you can send it to someone who's using hyperdrive.el and then they could download it Let me see where, well, let's just hack the code for a second. Wow. Summer says, so basically you don't have to use WeTransfer anymore, just do it from home. Okay, yeah, yeah, basically something like that. 
So this is using the hyper SDK. It's a pretty small file. Uh, Ashra says, I have an example. Prot has his website. However, websites only allow limited transfers. So he puts all his long videos on a hyperdrive instead. Yeah, that could be. DJ Cthulhu says, I assumed it was using GNU PG. It could be using GNU PG for the encryption and signing. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Ben is probably just the executable. Okay, it's the command line interface. That's fine. So this is just a thin wrapper on top of the uh, hyperdrive SDK, I think. Key. Okay, so in the API, you create a new hyperdrive and you can pass a key. Oh, it's a public key. Okay. Uses the core at name DB from the store unless you set the public key. Hmm. Uh, content key, the public key of hyper blobs instance holding blobs associated with entries. Let's just keep looking for key. Yeah, well, I wonder if the uh, EmacsConf presentation has uh, some other information that might be useful for this. Hey, Gavin. Nice to see you. All right. There's a, apparently a simple seeder command, which uh, makes it easy to seed the network with a bunch of files, apparently. Let's check out uh, the hyper bum, 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 e shell. Hyper gateway help. Okay, so it straight up just runs the gateway. It doesn't take any parameters. Ready F says, have you, have you ever tried Nix? Yes, I used Nix a long time ago. Probably 20. What year was that? 2014, 2015. I don't need Nix. I have Geeks. I mean, I use Nix to install pa certain packages, but uh, I don't use it for my systems. Okay, so there must be a folder where all this stuff is being stored. So if I go to cache, uh, hyper, no. What about uh, local? Hyper gateway Node.js cores. Okay, here we go. I don't know what I'm going to be exposing here by looking at these. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. All right, just some opaque information. Yeah, nice.
Who knows what that all is? All right, so Hyper Gateway Node.js. Um, interesting. Content address DB, yeah. All right, so let's search for Is there really no issues on this whole repo? There's no damn way. There is no way. Yeah, I didn't think so. So where is that path getting calculated from? That's interesting. What I'm trying to figure out is like, how does it save the information locally? How would one back up their, oh, primary key. That's probably what it is, right? This file, 32 bytes, uh, binary data, I'm guessing. Huh. So if I clone that primary key across to others, does it would it would it work? Kind of weird. I've only opened two drives, mine that I created and that other one that we pulled through the link, and there's four folders here. Uh, what about uh, hyper drive open AA, okay, I don't see AA as the beginning of any of these, so it's not really, doesn't seem to be correlated with the uh, URL. Let's go to the GitHub page and search for that again. Okay. That's fine. And what is a core store? Hypercore factory. Now we're getting into all the very strange uh, conceptual language. Easier to manage large collections of named hypercores. It's uh, designed to efficiently store and replicate multiple sets of interlinked hypercores, removing the responsibility of managing custom storage replication code from these higher level modules. So it's like a, a lower level storage, storage substrate, possibly on the peer to peer network. Uh, loads of hypercore by, by name or from the provided key. Okay. Key is just the, the identifier for the storage. Over as default, the default primary key. Primary key. Primary key used to generate new hypercore key pairs. Randomly generated and persisted in the storage directory. Okay. Is that what we saw here? Ah, okay. So maybe that's it. Hyper shell. A command line interface for generating and connecting to peer-to-peer end-to-end encrypted shells. Peer-to-peer sh peer -peer shell server. How does that work? <laughs> Their logo is very literal. Yes, they're punching a hole. Swiss Army Knife... Proxy powered by Hyper DHT. Oh, it's a proxy. Okay. It's all a bunch of components for distributed uh, networks, apparently. 
find and connect to peers announcing a common topic that can be anything. I mean, if you're building peer-to-peer -peer apps, it seems like this could be pretty useful stuff, but it's all like JavaScript libraries. So that limits what you can do with it. You know, Cult of the Dead Cow has been working on this thing called Valid, which is also a peer-to-peer -peer network and application framework. I'm kind of curious about uh, what that could be used for in a similar vein. Also, there's uh, Sprightly Goblins, which is a peer-to-peer -peer protocol, API, etc. But uh, I don't know that they've thought anything about file sharing yet. Ashra says, if it is persistent node, then your future keys are all more or less now compromised due to the key being shown. Might want to purge and regenerate the drive. Yeah, of course. Uh, application framework, does it do more than storage? Yeah, I think so. It's a good question, actually. Framework only shows up here at the top of the page. Uh, technical details. It's similar to IPFS and Tor. Without a blockchain or transactional layer, that's good. Uh, can be part of user-facing applications or run as a headless node. Uh, private routing. We're not going to go read a bunch of cryptography stuff right now. Button called Valid Chat. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a it's like a proof of concept app. They built it using Flutter, which makes it cross platform UI, but it's not available to be tried at the moment. I'm guessing it's just a set of libraries that can be pulled into an application. Hey, Data Monoid. Redacted says, if it does the actual computation in a distributed way, I'm excited. Hmm. I don't know if it does anything like that. It says it has an RPC uh, protocol. Cap and Proto. Cap and Proto has some uh, connection to what's going on at Sprightly because it's another uh, OCAP in type of uh, protocol, I think capability what do they call it capability network protocol capability based rpc system okay anyway distributed hash table blah 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 full control over your data not based on blockchain popular data becomes more available automatically i'm curious what's going to happen with this I, I keep seeing people on the fediverse talking about it but i don't really know yet um how far along it is serialization <laughs> all right <clears throat> so so yeah we don't know if you can back up a hyperdrive i'm guessing you can somehow i mean there must be a way to store a key that pr primary key and then uh reuse it elsewhere but it doesn't seem that hyperdrive.el is designed to make that easy which is fine so it goes back to the question, what is this for? Well, I guess it's just for sharing files with other people. Because even you, as the sole user of a drive, it doesn't seem like there's any affordance for making it possible to edit those same files from multiple devices that you own. So uh, it's kind of limited in that aspect, but maybe it will change over time. It'd be nice if it did, because I can imagine using this instead of something like sync thing sync thing is very like file based and um you know it's sort of watching your files for changes and then syncing those across machines which i guess is the same thing it would be the same thing if hyperdrive did something like that but you maybe it's easier to set up i don't know sync thing is not so hard to set up but it's not very easy easily replicable i've seen 
Like you, you can't just like ch checking your sync thing configuration to source control and then have it work when you load it up on your machines, I think. I haven't tried hard enough though. So that's uh, that's hyperdrive.el. Um, it's pretty cool. I like it. I mean, I think that the um, the package is super high quality. Like the actual interface in Emacs is really nice. I'm curious to see what the um, expected usage pattern is for this. Maybe the Emacs Conf video has some more details on how they expect you to use it. Uh, Summer says, uh, I love sync thing. It does the job. Yes, it does a job. I used it for many years. I, I don't have my stuff set up right now because I'm not actually syncing any files, but um, it is good stuff. Hello to Justin. Thank you very much. All right. Let's see. What else could we look into related to this? Is there anything else like this for Emacs that would allow you to do file sharing? I, I am curious about like Valid or other things like it. Let's see, Emacs IPFS. There must be an IPFS package for Emacs. Uh, okay. There's an IPFS desktop. Uh, I think that's in Geeks too. Come on, IPFS. All right, there's a Go IPFS. All right, that might be it. Peer-to-peer -peer hypermedia protocol, version peer-to-peer -peer file system. A uh, single BitTorrent swarm exchanging Git objects, blah, blah, blah. You can mount the whole world at slash IPFS. That's kind of crazy. So let's uh, pull that up. Uh, Geeks shell, I, uh, go IPFS. Let's see how long it takes to install that. Got a bunch of Go dependencies we have to pull in, probably. It's probably not this. It's probably the CLI. Ah, there we go. Command line. Now we're building it. So publish a file with IPFS using the command line. Uh, let's see, blah, 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 blah. Don't think you need that, do you? Gun says, is there any comparison of sharing protocols, pros, and con pros or cons? Well, let's see, IPFS versus a uh, hyperdrive. Why Hypercore? Wow, what is happening? I thought that was a... Stop trying to translate everything. Change the English. Jeez. What are the differences between IPFS and Hyperdrive according to Stack Overflow? Global namespace on IPFS. Yeah, okay. So yeah, it's definitely... In, there's no context of uh, drives in IPFS. But you could probably implement something like that, I guess. Connection to IPFS is usually persistent. Hyperdrive's current tooling for efficiently synchronizing entire directories of files is more polished. Oh, this is from 2018, so this thing is pretty old, actually. Let's see. IPFS. Uh, Jelp. Help. There we go. Initialize local IPFS configuration. Add a file to IPFS. All right, that's cool. IPFS init. 
who knows if that's going to expose to anything. All right, let's see. To get started, enter IPFS cat. Uh, selected en encoding not supported. What happened? There we go. So we we just uh, uh, wrote out the contents of this file from the IPFS network. If I were to go into, uh, let's see. Uh, what was it? IPFS add. IPFS add December 15th. Boom. So this apparently is the URL for this file, I guess. What if I cat this? Oof. That might not actually work. Oh, it did work. Okay, so I was able to pull that off the network in theory. I don't know if it actually did pull it off the network or if it just has it from my local cache. But uh, that's cool. So basically, see you, Summer. Uh, basically, you could write a similar interface in Emacs over IPFS, but uh, since there's not inherently a directory concept, a, a uh, square root minus one, Pavel. Uh, since there's not a directory concept built in, then it's not as easy to like share a directory of files using IPFS. You, you kind of have to like probably create your own file that links to the other files maybe, who knows. Upload and pin a file, retrieving with a gateway. Oh, that's cool. Is there one that we can load up? Gateway providers. Uh, yeah, where is it? Can you link me to one? Public gateways, okay. Let's see if we can pull my file then. Third party gateways, list of public gateways, cool. Dweb.link, okay. Never mind. Where is this? Oh, is that, do I just put the, the hash there? Let's see. That's kind of interesting. All right, let's do this. Uh, invalid path, encoding not supported, blah, blah, blah. Who knows? Didn't work like I thought it would. Another one. But that must be it, right? You're just basically putting in the hash or the ID of the item. Doesn't like it though. Whatever. Ashra says public gateway providers are really slow. Yeah, apparently so. Do I have to serve anything? IPFS help. Uh. <clears throat> Like a demon or something. Anyway. You can create mounts too. I don't know if inside of a mount you can create files. Can I place paste the hash in IRC? Let's see. Whoa. Let's get back to it. Uh da 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 V term. Did I screw that up somehow? Yeah, okay. I'll put it in the... Uh... There you go.
Uh, ERC looks kind of nice compared to uh, what I'm used to with uh, RC IRC. Maybe I should go back to using ERC. Okay. Anyway, that was uh, interesting just to see, you know, an alternative here. IPFS is not as user friendly as Hyperdrive, it seems. But they are basically the same idea. Well, at the lowest level, you know, if you want to share a file with someone else over a distributed network, um, then both IPFS and Hyperdrive are ways to do that. Redacted says Cersei is nice too. Yeah, I need to um, set that one up again. My sick cat disappeared. Oh boy. Uh, dat. Yeah, there was dat. That thing had some uh, huh. controversy behind it. Yeah. They're still around. Yeah, that's what Beaker was based on, was dat. Oh. Many projects building on top of the Hypercore protocol. Hmm. Cool. Purple G says, one day I'll join IRC. Yeah, you should join IRC. For sure. Because we're mostly there now. All right, anyway, I can put that in here in the show notes. Hello, Daniel42. Let's put this in here. Okay. Hey, Pi the Sailor. Yeah, we, we have a live chat in IRC. That's the primary chat now. I actually wrote a chat bot, which is what you see on the screen. If you're watching the, uh, the stream, you see text popping up on the screen. That's coming from my Guile scheme based chat bot. And I'm hosting a web page from inside of that. And then uh, all the chat go gets funneled into that UI. So that UI is mine. I wrote that. And I'm bridging the Twitch chat to the System Crafters Live IRC room. And then the restream chat bot, because I'm multi-streaming on YouTube and Twitch, the restream chat bot takes the YouTube chat and puts it into Twitch. So then the YouTube chat goes from YouTube to Twitch to System Crafters Live IRC, which is kind of crazy, but uh, it works. So that's kind of cool. All right. Anyway, uh, Vale, it would be cool if we had some more details on like what exactly it's going to do. Or maybe access to the code somewhere. Ah, okay. There is access to the code. There, it's, it's on GitLab. Let's take a quick little look at that. And the System Crackers Live goes to Twitch, goes to YouTube. That's right. Because you can see the Twitch System Crafter bot spamming the YouTube chat. Ha, <laughs> yes, we're, we're doing it with Lisp. I'm running this stream with Emacs Lisp and Scheme, so that's the way to do it. Wasm fixes. Okay, this seems to be written in Rust. Oh, interesting. Dave's uh, posted a link that the EFF just wrote about Sprightly and Valid. Uh, well, actually, I can go to the chat and pull that up. This, isn't it so nice to have everything in IRC so that I can just pop open to a buffer from the streaming machine and, and just grab these things? That's incredible. Ashra says, yeah, folks need to get here and put a like on the stream. Yes. Go do what all the the YouTube experts tell you to do. Smash like on the stream, hit that subscribe button, click the bell so you're notified of all the videos that I don't post on a weekly basis. As you can see, I'm not uh, that crazy about being a content creator. I just like streaming. Uh, Gun says, is Valid a pun of Vale ID? Well, now that you say it, it could be. Sprightly and Valid, exciting projects building the peer-to-peer -peer web. 
do goof face. Is that the the thumbnail face? No, we're not doing that. I'm not gonna become uh, a Wojak. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Two leading projects, Sprightly and Valid. That's cool. Patreon exclusive? Yeah. That's only for the OnlyFans. All, all the uh, the Poggers face images are only on my OnlyFans. Sprightly is worth keeping an eye on, being distributed by the Institute of the same name, framework for building distributed apps. You don't have to know that they're distributed. Yeah, maybe we should just stop wasting our time looking at these other things and just uh, contribute to Sprightly and Hoot instead so that we can have a nice uh, scheme-based distrib distributed application protocol. I would prefer that. I'm not saying that, DJ Cthulhu. See you, Glenneth. Redacta says, you need clickbaity title to, uh, titles too. I installed an Emacs package and this happened. I, I get close enough to the clickbait, but uh, yeah. We're not going to go all the way there. Sprightly is con uh, combining OCAP with a message passing protocol that doesn't care if the other priority is communicating with is on the same device. Yep, yep, yep. All right, valid. Number of promising features. You describe it as a cross between Tor and IPFS. That's cool. Dave says in the chat, there are opportunities for interop between Sprightly and Valid. Uh, Valid could be a transport for apps built with goblins or other OCAP in implementations. Yeah, that's actually kind of an interesting idea. Because goblins does need a transport for sending the messages back and forth. So if Valid actually has a Tor-like protocol for connection between nodes. Can construct an encrypted private tunnel over the public internet. And a distributed hash table, which lets anyone look up a bit of this data associated with a specific key. Ah, Valid's DHT is particularly intriguing because it is a multi-writer, which sounds like uh, it addresses the problem we were looking at today. In most DHTs, only one party can set the value stored to the particular key, but Valid, uh, the creator of a DHT key, can choose to share the writing capability with others, creating a system where nodes can communicate by leaving notes for each other in the DHT. That sounds awesome. Dave says, OCAPN is transport agnostic, so Valid could be one of many possible options. Yeah, I guess if you wanted to use that uh, that tunneling protocol to keep the communication secure, then that is something that could be done. Uh, Valid has created an early alpha, alpha of a chat program, Valid Chat, based on exactly this feature. Very mobile-friendly framework. The library is available for a number of platforms and programming languages. Is it just like wrapping the the built version of the Rust library, I wonder, if they expose a good C ABI. That would be nice. Cool, well, that sounds promising. Let's put that in the uh, show notes also. So yeah, I don't know, like personally, I've said this before, probably on one of the earlier streams about Hoot, uh, where we, I, maybe the one where we interviewed uh, Christine, Dave, and uh, Robin. But sort of this vision I have in mind for system crafting is that, okay, it's great that you can set up your one machine the way that you want it to be set up. Like you have GNU Geeks to configure your entire machine, both user and system level um, to your liking. You also have GNU Emacs, which is like a full working environment. Um, but what if you want to 
communicate between your machines in a way that's very specific to what you're doing. Like you don't want to have to write your own full application that speaks some protocol, right? Uh, either via H like setting up an HTTP server somewhere or maybe a TCP connection to a socket on another machine or whatever. You don't want to have to go through all that trouble. What you want is just a simple API where you can say, I want to connect to this other node that I have. Here's its key and I want to send a message to it. Um, that would give you a very simple way to do kind of complex orchestration between your machines if you wanted to. So if you b can basically call a function on another machine of, of your own through this private network that nobody else can actually access because they can't either see your other endpoint or they don't have access to the the handle to the function, which is basically what Goblins is trying to do. Like you, you give someone access to uh, an endpoint through like a function effectively, and then they, you can call that function to do something on another machine, right? So learning how to code, write scheme code, um, would give you the ability to then do complicated stuff between your machines. Well, not even really that complicated. Just, you know, cause things to happen between your machines, send notifications between your machines, move files between your machines without having to use other more complicated ways of doing it. Redacted says Geeks Deploy already kind of does that though, right? Well, Geeks Deploy, it needs to be told how to deploy things to other machines. I mean, there's like the SSH uh, connection capability, but you're still using SSH for that. So I'm, I'm thinking more on a simpler level. We're not talking about like deploying system configs. We're talking about just, you know, I'm trying, trying to think of a concrete example that would be useful for this. Let's say that you have your, um, you have ERC set up in Emacs and whenever you receive a private mention, you want to send a push notification to your mobile device. Uh, how would you do that? Well, if you have a simple API with like a distributed communication system, I'm just saying the wrong words for all this, uh, something like goblins, let's say, uh, your Emacs code could shell out to a program. Well, I know that already sounds more complicated. If Emacs had its own goblins interface, which would be cool if it did, um, then in the Emacs list, you could call a function that would send that notification to uh, your other machine or your phone, but your phone obviously has to have like an endpoint running um, to receive that message. Well, that's kind of where Guile Who comes in because if you can compile a uh, scheme to Wasm and load it up into some kind of host, like if you have like a program in Android that can load arbitrary Wasm and has a host interface for doing things like showing notifications on the screen, then uh, you could have that connect to your sort of your private network of nodes using goblins or Valid or whatever, and then you can have these interactions between your devices. So uh, that's something I would like to see happen. Um, I don't know how easy it is to for that to become a reality, but I think that there's an interesting use case for having an Android app or even an iOS app in theory that could provide that host environment for WebAssembly. So if you just like give it a .wasm file and load it up, then it, obviously if you trust the WASM file, you can't just load up any arbitrary random code. But uh, you could call uh, device APIs basically through this WASM code. And uh, the way that Hoot is being designed right now is set up such that it's not assuming you're going to be deploying it into a JavaScript specific environment. Um, you you have to manually add uh, foreign function interface registrations. So if you load that Wasm code up in a, an Android app that is actually interpreting the Wasm directly, then in theory you could provide it the, those functions through the FFI interface uh, into the the host the host. APIs, I guess. I'm rambling a little bit, but. Pavel says, sounds a bit like an opportunity for RCE. What's RCE? I 
Ah, yes. Remote code execution? Sure. That's why I say you should trust the Wasm that you deploy, which is why I would say, like, if you can write it yourself, then you can trust it, right? Redacted says, maybe goblins could be a topic for a future stream. Sure. Definitely. Dave says, OCAPs prevent RCE. That's what I'm banking on. So, yeah, I mean, goblins is usable today. But to me, it will be more interesting when goblins works in Wasm. And that's not happening just yet, I think. Maybe uh, sometime first half of next year, I'm guessing. I think that's what I heard. But these things can always change. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's my sort of vision. Like the next step past just, you know, configuring your entire machine and scheme is to have a private personal network of devices that are running uh, scheme code that can talk between each other in a very easy way so that you can um, kind of build your own applications in a sense. It's kind of like a, a low-level application. You, you, you're just sort of sending specific bits of information back and forth or syncing files, etc. Anyway, a lot of interesting stuff happening out there in the world of uh, distributed computing. And uh, the... Uh, Conclusion, I suppose you could say, on hyperdrive.el. It's a very nicely made package, uh, very good documentation. Uh, I recommend you try it out if you want to have an interesting way to share files with other people um, without having to upload it somewhere. So you don't need to have any file storage. You don't need to use something like uh, oxo.st, which you could if you want to. That's kind of a nice service. But there is a maximum file size of 512 megabytes. So if you wanted to you know, share a bigger file with someone from your machine, then hyperdrive.el could be a way to do that. But it does have the downside that you need to install uh, the hyper gateway either via Node.js or via the uh, pre-compiled um, version that's provided on the hyper gateway repo if you go down to the releases here. So you can download it for your platform and run it. So that is one downside, but it, it does seem to work. Works just fine, actually. Dave says, uh, with OCATS, we can build things like online games where users can write their own scripts without breaking security. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Like, if you if you consider, like, writing a MUD with uh, with this functionality where anybody could script, script the MUD, basically, um, just, just, just run arbitrary code in the network, that could be pretty cool if it works. It might be complicated to make that work. I don't know. All right. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for the day. Um, I think next week we might do like a year in review type stream where we just talk about like the the different things we've talked about over the year and uh, talk about maybe what we'll do in the next year. So that will be uh, next Friday. What what day is that calendar? That's the oh, is that right? No, not even next week. I was going to do it on the 29th. So next week is the 22nd, so I got to think of another idea. Damn, I thought I had my last stream of the year figured out, but I don't. Anyway, next week we'll figure something out. Uh, if you have suggestions for what we could talk about on next week's stream, the 12 days of craft, Craftmas, hmm, what can we do for that? Uh, I will be out of work next week, so I might have more time to do something interesting. So if anybody has ideas for what we could talk about on the stream next week, let me know. Um, maybe I'll do some interesting stuff, some little, some more hacks for my, uh, bridge bot. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, thanks all for, for being here today and watching me stumble through hyperdrive.el. I think it was pretty good though. I mean, it's a, it's a good a project. You should try it out if you're interested. And if, uh, if you create a hyperdrive and you want to share, share it with some other people so they can check out your hyper, hyperdrive, then drop into the system crafters IRC, irc.librachat, uh, hash system crafters and post your <laughs> uh, post your link to your hyperdrive so that other people can check it out there too all right anyway i uh, hope you all have a great weekend uh, until next time 
happy hacking. We'll see you.